it is a universal human right. This is by the declared by the United Nations that you have the right to change your nationality. My problem is that you don't in rugby. They are contrary to the human rights. And we have a tiny population and, and you're gonna like, dwindle that down more by having uh, the current rules in place. Fundamentally, in my, in, you know, in my feelings is that's wrong. You, you immediately look at something like the World Cup and, and two or three guys in each of those Pacific Islands if they did have that homecoming. A, it could make a difference between teams going into quarterfinals potentially, which the repercussions for funding, for more players wanting to, see, to play for their home unions rather than migrate, all these things are really positive. If we don't get enough good players at the World Cup, Tonga could lose by 50, 70 points. Because uh, we're, we're, you know, we're basically had an arm, or you know, running on one leg because we, we can't get our, our better players available because they're stuck to silly rules. The impact is real. You know, if, if 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 rugby was allowed to have its best players and we could go and 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 beat teams that we we are naturally usually beat. You know, when I used to play, we used to beat Japan by 30 odd points. Now it's the other way around, and if and Japan have got four or five Tongans. It would be great to be able to have, have a rule of such in place where, uh, we, we, where you could, could, could play with dual nations um, or even, you know, uh, even, even three nations if you're eligible. Um, within reason, I, I believe, um, you know, you want to keep the integrity of the game. You want to keep the integrity of rugby as such a great game. We're growing the game and developing the game. Uh, there should be a uh, you know, certain number that's allowed to, to come back and, and, and play, you know, particularly if it's a place of heritage, you know, it's blood, that a person should be able to go back if they're coming from a tier one down to a tier two. It would show our nations and show the kids growing up that, you know, we, we don't want to chase this all the time, that we can, you know, bring up our own identities into, through our islands. They will add a lot into our, into our, our small nations and, take us to a different level, um, world rugby hasn't been so. Whilst I'm, I'm super proud of them making the All Blacks, you know, you have people like George Moala, Malakai Fekitoa, uh, Tunga Fasi, Shannon Fitzel, all those guys were, were here growing up through the system here and they were taken from here and obviously play overseas and they opted to play for New Zealand. So when the, the top 30 taken away from a rugby population of 20,000 and you have school from Australia taking some, you have Japan taking up to 10 people, six between six to 10 people a year and you have a rugby league um, coming in. But at the end of it, we just left with nothing. It came down to the same opportunities like sometimes I say that people say that the, the man and the black jersey is because the success but it's also like the money that we're getting paid like you know you, you know that you're going to be able to look after the family so being a Pacific Islander is always, you know, um, helping our community or, or giving back and, and there's that, that a perfect opportunity for me. I think from for, for a rugby player's perspective, I can only see the, the pros to it in terms of international games being more competitive. If the opportunity does come up for Tonga, you know, that is the, the reality and the decision I've uh, made and, and uh, I'll commit to that. Obviously what happens now is that you're only allowed one choice and that choice is usually made when you're young and broke. Okay, so you're obviously gonna decide where you can get your money from better, where you can get an opportunity from better or whatever. You make that decision when you're young and broke because you got no money. But now later on in the career, you're not young and broke. Now it's about your identity, you're secure, your family now have education or you can pay for them to go to school. Now is the most purest decision you will make about identity and nationality because you've taken the economic side out of it. You're not that poor 19 year old anymore with no money who needs anything. 
10 years on, five years on, you're, you're secure, you're financially secure. Now your decision take, is not about who can pay me the most. Now it is purely your soul. And that is what they always say they want to capture, is we want the essence of international rugby, nationality. That's your decision there. You should be allowed to make that decision when you're 30 or whatever, 25, and change your mind according to your national, nationality, consistent with the Declaration of Human Rights. And it will be a better decision on your identity, your ethnicity, your culture, where you're from, where your heart lies, and you should be allowed to change then. You know, there's, there's a threat. There's a threat. If, if, you know, if you, if you look at some of the good players, the great players, the Pacific Island players that we have globally, you put them back in their, 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 their respective nations. And with the development that they've gained through other unions and other clubs, you know, you're putting some really good competition back there. Yes, they are being developed overseas, uh, through the competitions overseas. Uh, to, to hold a massive competition takes millions and millions of dollars. We can't do that. You can't tell me that you go to school in one country and then that country will be telling you, no, you can't work for America or so and so because we schooled you here and you stay here. No, that, that, that mentality is not, again, not different from slave uh, owners. You don't own the person. There are a group of nations that are obviously you know, the top ones, with all the money, with all the resources, with, and, you know, they've been successful forever. And it's a bit about protecting that. If they're truly about growing the game globally, you've got to look at other options and you've got to look at them with, with open eyes. I was fortunate to be able to play um, both for the All Blacks and Monsanto. And what a privilege it was to go back, you know? I mean, I still had enough or something to offer. Uh, to to my Samoan brothers and, and, and my, my 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 country of origin, and I, I suppose the cry is if you're going to want if you want to globalise the game, then give every especially the smaller nation because you're asking us to pull the pull the rabbit out of the hat every four years, and it just doesn't happen. And if you want to globalise the game and get us up there compete, competing with the best, and they could help by just relaxing the rules big time. You see the impact of these players coming back, of experience, of, of, of professional environment, getting the right coaches and, and being in a structured, you know, a competition like the NRL, you know, and a very professional win. So these players know what, what a professional is, they know how to play um, at the elite level, you know, and I guess, um, you know, bringing players like Charles Piatau to play for Tonga, but that's going to, again, going to help Tonga. We have amazing athletes, but because of the eligibility rules, uh, they're locked up, they're, they're, they're stockpiled deliberately by, by big countries. Um, and, they, and, they, and they know the rules, and they, they can do this with the rules. The current rules allow them to do this. So this is uh, we, what we are saying is, no, that's not fair, and that's, that, that's not the way it should be. These, these people are our people, and they should have the ability to come and play for our country. If they just keep eligibility simple, um, will be fine. Uh, the Olympics keep it simple. Uh, same, same thing. Three year, three year stand down if you're going to swap countries and citizenship. So it, it ticks, it's the same as, as, as the Olympics. So why don't we follow the biggest sport event in the world, which they see as fair.